Hello, 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 folks. Happy Sunday. How's everyone doing today? As I mentioned on Twitter, I am a little sick, so we're probably not going to do a full three hour stream today. Hey, D5. Um, but I'm still happy to be here with you today. D5, I hope your weekend is going well. We'll get started here in about one minute. Good to see you here today, folks. <laughs> hey, Ty, good to see you. Excited for this one. Glad to hear it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I figured, Ty. That's why we're doing this, because um, we haven't done a Banky stream in a while. It's been a couple months, so figured it was about time. And over the holiday break, we'll give people plenty of time to practice. Um, and so I thought we could get started on the right foot for the holiday break time and... Um, Give you plenty of time to practice your answers to behavioral questions. <laughs> Thank you, Zena. Hey, Ninja! Congratulations! You have your first chat with a tech recruiter tomorrow. That's very exciting. That's awesome. Good job. And thank you for the well wishes there, Zena. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, howdy everybody. Um, yeah, so I am just a little bit sick. It's not too bad. Um, we'll see, I, I might have to like go on mute and sneeze occasionally. <laughs> I'm uh, very congested uh, in the uh, nasal area. Uh, I seem to be speed running illnesses this month. Uh, I was sick, uh, I, I guess I got a uh, sore throat from my dad uh, right after Thanksgiving and now I'm have like a, just a regular cold going on. COVID test is negative and all that. Um, but yeah, just, you know, speed running all the illnesses I missed out on <laughs> over the last uh, two years. It's no big deal. Uh, all right. So, uh, <laughs> hey, Murabek. Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously the point of the stream today is to um, go over the bank. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with what the bank is, um, it's essentially just a set of common interview questions that you're likely to see when you go into really any job interview. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tech interview. Um, and probably the most important questions in the bank are um, behavioral questions. So what those are are questions that have to do less with your technical skills, like what languages you know, um, <laughs> what algorithms you can solve, and that kind of thing. Um, it's more about, are you going to be someone that these people are going to want to work with? Um, are you going to be able to fit into the team? Are you going to be able to learn and adapt um, to situations? And it's just figuring out who you are as a person. Um, and so being able to answer those questions um, efficiently and, and uh, in, in a way that puts you in the best light possible uh, is really, really important. <laughs> If nothing else, you should be able to answer behavioral questions uh, quickly and confidently in, in, in any job interview. Um, so that's what we're going to kind of work on a little bit today. Um, hey, Chris. Hey, CJ James. Good to see everybody. So yeah, that's what that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time doing today. Um, and I just realized I don't necessarily have a link to just like the bank that's not my personal copy. Um, does anybody have the link to like the one in, on Leon's channel? If not, I can just grab it real quick off of Leon's channel. Um, I'll just see who can find it first. <laughs> All right, getting there, getting there. Oh, and I got to turn on captions. Yep. 
And at any point, if you want a copy of the bank for yourself, um, if you lose the link, I found the link. So um, if you lose the link I'm about to give you, um, you can go to Leon's um, Twitch channel and type in exclamation point bank. Oh, thank you, Ivan. Yes. So I'll spam it here again. Um, there you go. And yeah, so that's the link to the, the, the link that I've been sharing, the one that I just shared, that's a link to the, the bank of questions and absolutely take this and modify it for yourself, whatever you need to do um, so that you can answer these questions. It's absolutely vital for job interviews. Um, give me just a moment. I'm going to turn on my closed captions and then we'll get into it. Do, 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 do. So while I'm doing that, um, out of curiosity, um, how is, um, how is everybody's job hunt going so far? Um, you know, I, if you're struggling, that's fine. Um, if you've gotten a job or gotten an interview, that's awesome. Please share that too. I want to hear both sides of it. How, how are folks feeling? How are folks doing? Um, interviews, no interviews, <laughs> new job, no new job. How is that? How is the hunt going? All right, captions are starting now. So you should have captions available if you want or need them. Um, you can turn them on by uh, hovering your mouse over the right side of your Twitch window and a little menu should pop up for you to turn those on if that's something you would like. All right. See, J. James says, this is perfect. I'm working on my behavioral right now. <laughs> and, uh, I was watching your past streams on it yesterday. Yes, thank you for sharing that too. I do have past streams where we've done Bank You Review as well. Uh, those are available on my YouTube channel. Um, exclamation point YouTube in chat if you'd like a link to my YouTube channel where you can find other videos labeled uh, Banky or The Bank. Um, and you can definitely watch those as well. Uh, Marco says, I'm planning to job hunt next month. This one, I'm improving my portfolio. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, my dog is growling at something. Hey, stop. Shush. Shush. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe so. <laughs> He's a dingus. All right. You're getting messages from recruiters, but no interview yet. That's fine. That's awesome that you're getting messages. I hope you're responding to those messages um, so that you can, you know, get to that next step of the interview. Zena says, I have a solid network connection with a company that wasn't my priority two months ago, but I'm feeling much more optimistic about it now. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Sounds like you're making progress. Yeah, and uh, you bring up a great point there, Zena. Um, networking, uh, establishing connections um, with a network of some kind, whether it's at a single company or on Twitter or you know, establishing a network with fellow professionals. Um, is a great way to get your foot in the door and have them, you know, put in a good word for you. Honestly, um, you have a much better chance of being noticed and, and being considered if somebody actually knows you <laughs> rather than just some random person who, you know, put in their resume. Yeah. Great to hear. Feel free to share your, you know, your stories at any point. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I used to work with the software engineers in my retail job before, before they were an engineer. Okay. So yeah, you have legit, like, yeah, history with these folks. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, Chris. Yeah. So they say that, you know, things have slowed down since we hit this quarter of the year. Absolutely. It's the end of the year. People are taking vacations, holiday trips, all that sort of thing. Um, but the big thing is to continue planting seeds related to networking. Absolutely. You can network year round, even at points in the year when companies are not hiring. What's cool is an IT help desk position that presented itself in all this. That's great. Wasn't the job or salary I was looking for, but this process really does work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a foot in the door, right? <laughs> okay. Switch it over to small window here. Okay, so uh, again, the purpose today is to continue reviewing behavioral questions. So um, I am curious, I, I, several folks said here in chat that they are working on behavioral uh, review, which is really great. Um, you absolutely should be. So are there certain questions that anyone is um, struggling with uh, on, you know, in this list of behavioral questions? Are there ones like, even if you're just looking at them for the first time today, are there ones that you're like, wait, I don't know how to answer this. Um, 
you know, or ones that you've tried to answer and you're not really sure, like, what, what should I say? What is this question asking? Um, that kind of thing. So let me know what it, what are you guys not sure about here in this list of behavioral questions? And I apologize. I will be sniffling a little bit again. I'm pretty clogged up up here. So uh, apologies for that. Also too, while y'all are thinking about that, um, I wanted to share something. So, um, you know, as many of you know, I'm currently employed as a dev in my day job. And um, a couple months ago, we hired on three new people onto our team, which is awesome. Uh, the fact that we were able to hire three people is pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, I, I've heard from a lot of people, I've done a lot of coffee chats and things where people are really concerned that they're going to get hired and they aren't going to like be able to be like the the best contributor like immediately. Um, like, oh, what if I get hired and, and they realize I don't know what I'm doing? you know, and that sort of thing. And I mean, sure, that's like, you know, it, it, your concern is legitimate. And I acknowledge that it's a real concern. But um, I just want you to know that really no good employer is going to expect you to be a, an awesome contributor right away. Just for some perspective, we hired these three people, you know, like three months ago, and none of them are inexperienced. Um, but they've all just now finished training and just now started actually contributing like to the, um, to the work that we do every day. So previously they were all just in training, they were attending meetings, they were sort of just picking things up and we didn't really expect, you know, any sort of contribution until they were ready. And now they are starting to be ready and now they are starting to contribute and, it's fine. You know, it's been a few months. And so nobody, you know, no, none of us expected these new people to just be firing on all cylinders right away. It took one of these people like a month to even get their, like all their equipment, like their, their laptop and monitors working and everything. You know, it, there's always going to be things that, you know, are going to be a barrier um, to, to, to just getting up and running. And so uh, that's a, a concern that I've heard from several people is like, oh, well, when I get hired, you know, what if, what if I, you know, can't be the, you know, can't be amazing right away. That's fine. <laughs> they shouldn't, they aren't going to have like crazy expectations for you right away, right out the gate. Um, and what, hopefully what they'll also have for you is good, um, you know, support, good people you can ask questions to and that kind of thing. Like I spent two hours with the new people on Friday, um, just helping them troubleshoot some stuff they were working on. And, you know, and I didn't mind it because I feel like it's an investment in the new people is that if I can invest some of my time with them now, it will pay dividends consistently for the rest of the time that they're employed on this team because they will learn quicker and be able to contribute more faster. So uh, I just want to put that out there because it's something I've heard in a few coffee chats that I've had with folks. Um, and I just wanted to let you know it's okay. <laughs> You're going to be fine. <laughs> um, and Zena says it takes time to get set up with your local environment and get set up with the teams and testing and production environment, right? Yeah, and that's a great point, is that when you're a dev, you're gonna be using a lot of different tools and systems. Um, so for example, I'm a backend dev, I work with relational databases. And so we have multiple databases that we have to have credentials for and you know be able to log into. Uh, and we have you know server side storage and we have, development tools like Informatica. Um, we have all sorts of software <laughs> that we have to interface with every single day. And all of those have separate logins and, you know, credentials and everything. And it just takes a long time to get all that up and running and sorted out. And, you know, people have the wrong permissions and that kind of, it just takes a long time. And to even get familiar with the code, like the, the layout of things, right? Like, oh, which database do I need to I, I want to, you know, I want to access this, but which database do I need again? We have six databases. Like, you know, it just takes a while to, to just get familiar with it and be able to navigate your way around. Yes. I love that you said that. Yeah. J seven. I love that you said that. Um, they said, I asked this question to an Amazon manager at a networking event. And he said his goal was to have his junior devs start contributing in three to six months. Yes. And that matches the timeline at my workplace too. I mean, we hired these people in September and it's September, October, November, December. Yeah. Four months. Right. And they're just now starting to contribute. Um, so 
it, yeah, it's not, it, nobody expects you to be fantabulous right out the gate. What they do expect is you to be someone who is going to have that drive to learn, to integrate themselves with the company culture, um, to, you know, maybe contribute in small ways when they can, but, you know, you, they just want you to be able to, to pick it up, right? Because there's a lot to pick up. It's not easy. I'm not saying that. It's not easy. But there's just a lot. And it's going to, it just takes time to do. Yeah, CJ says, it seems like it can be overwhelming at first, but you get used to it eventually. Absolutely. You will feel like you don't know what the hell you're doing at many points. Um, be like, why the heck did they hire me? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand anything. Uh, <laughs> I can't do this. All those things. But what's important is then is that you don't give in to that feeling and that you say, you think you break it down into, okay, what is what exactly is the hurdle that I've encountered here? Is it like, I can't get my password to work? Is it, um, I keep getting an error that I don't understand? Like, what is the actual problem here? And then you find the person that you can ask on your team and have them help you. Um, Cause when you're a new person too, another thing that can be really hard is asking for help because you wanna seem like the confident, like the, the confident and confident uh, new hire, right? You wanna, you wanna seem like, oh yeah, I got this, I can do it myself. I don't need no help, all that thing. And no, what you should be doing is asking for help quickly and often <laughs> so that you can get up to, so you can keep getting up to speed and, and figure those things out. And then ask for help and then note the answer and make sure that you can reference that answer again and so you don't have to keep asking, you know? Your Poppy says, I have an interview as a LAMP stack dev. Hmm. Now I'm curious what, yeah, I'm curious what that is. Today I need to figure out what the heck that means. <laughs> yeah, and Ryan said, I think it was Leon that said the best contribution in the beginning is documenting your learning journey with that company. Yeah, documentation is often, like someone who is willing to put together documentation or notes is often very appreciated. Um, that's not to say that you should let them saddle you with all the documentation, but if you can contribute and say like, yeah, so this is how I felt about the onboarding process. This is what I like. This is what could be better. That can really help, you know, the, the people on your team say, oh, this is how we can do better for the next person. Yep. Oh, Laravel, Angular. Yeah, maybe so. Oh, you go. Okay. Your puppy says that the, the interviews for Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. Oh, okay. Nice. That's exciting that you have an interview for a MySQL position. Uh, I am a SQL developer myself. Um, I've only, I've never worked with MySQL, but I've worked with uh, Microsoft SQL and Oracle SQL. Um, so, you know, T-SQL and uh, uh, PL-SQL. I work with PL-SQL right now. SQL is great. I highly I, I'm, I'm biased, but <laughs> I really like SQL. So I hope it goes well for you. SQL itself is also not that hard to pick up. So your poppy, if you haven't watched it already, I actually have an intro to SQL video on my YouTube channel. Uh, it teaches you the basics of SQL um, in just a couple hours. And yes, <laughs> absolutely, Poppy. Uh, yes, it teaches in like three hours. It teaches you all the basics of SQL. Um, the different types of joins, how to do select statements, insert date statements, delete statements, update statements. Basically, it teaches you how to do CRUD in SQL. So create, read, update, delete, how to do that in SQL, um, how to write standard queries, and how to do joins, which are all the most important basics of uh, relational database SQL things. Polly, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> Your SQLC stream from months ago literally carried me through an interview on Friday. Holy crap. I love to hear it. Thank you so much. And I'm glad the interview went well. That's awesome. That's literally why I did that stream. Everybody had been begging me to do it. Um, and I was like, okay. And I just tried to think about the most important basics that I could come up with that is just a crash course in SQL. So, um, yeah. You had an interview in, with SQL on Friday and I learned all of it from your three hour video. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. It makes me feel awesome. Thank you. 
Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I think I, I, I do plan to do more SQL content in the future, um, like related to more web stack SQL, um, you know, probably Postgres, because I think that's what Leon would like to like to see. Um, so yeah, I do. I think I will be doing a Postgres stream here pretty soon. I was going to do it maybe this month, and then I've been sick most of the month, so that's kind of been out the window. Um, but <laughs> sometime here soon, we'll, we'll do Postgres as well. Awesome, Cabrandi. Yeah. Good luck on the interview. Yeah, Mirabic, you can watch the stream on my YouTube channel. So do exclamation point YouTube in chat. That'll give you a direct link to my YouTube channel. Uh, and then on my channel, just search SQL uh, and it should pop right up for you. There you go. <laughs> yep, check it out. That's on the, and my YouTube channel is ad free. So you don't got to worry about any of that crap. Um, and yeah, I hope it helps you out. All right, that's awesome to hear. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and yeah, and SQL is, so even if you don't have an interview coming up with SQL, um, SQL is just really good to know, um, just the basics of it, how to write a simple select query. Um, you don't even have to know how to update tables or anything like that. Um, just if you can do a select statement with a where clause and maybe a join, um, that will put you miles ahead of most people and you'll be able to be that, that one wizard that can get stuff out of the database when nobody else can. Hote says SQL is very powerful with views and stored procedures. Yep, that's true. Um, but in PHP stack, we do not use uh, stored procedures, triggers, and stuff very often. Yeah, and there's different levels of SQL that you know you will use. At the basic level, you don't have to know anything about you know stored procedures or anything like that. Um, but just knowing basic SQL can get you a long way. You can go on my interview blog. I'm knowing that. Yeah, you never know where it'll come in handy. It's everywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Thank you again for sharing that. I. Uh, because I truly love SQL. Um, it's a fantastic language. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that other people are learning the magic as well. All right. So looking at these um, uh, behavioral questions, are there any of these questions in particular that folks are struggling with? Um, or ones that, are there any of these questions that you, you've been asked in an interview? <laughs> Mirabic says, why are there so many SQL variants? <laughs> because SQL has been around since the 1970s. That is 50 years that this language has been around. And anytime a language has been around for 50 years and it's still being used, you're going to get variants. <laughs> Everybody's going to think they're going to you know, create the best version of SQL and it just leads to another branch. Yeah, SQL is as old. As, yeah, I mean, it's been around since the 70s. That's why it's written. That's why traditionally it's written in all caps because, you know, all those older languages are all all caps. I write my SQL lowercase. <laughs> Except for field names. Well, those I capitalize. I'm, I'm a rebel. I, I do mixed case, which is, yeah. Ah, polymerization says, um, oh, for, for first, Hot Dance asks, does anybody know why all Linux commands are short, like CDLS, uh, MIC directory, RM, all those things? I would assume it's just because for convenience, um, but I don't know. If, any, if anybody uh, knows the answer, they're welcome to share. Uh, polymerization asks, I actually struggle with the tell me about yourself question. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, it's so open that I never know what to say. Um, yeah, welcome, Porridge, by the way. Uh, yeah, so the tell me about yourself question, yeah, it can be difficult, but it does get a bit easier if you think about um, why they are asking that question. So why are they asking tell me about yourself? You know, wh why is that question important? They're only going to ask questions that they care about. Um, and so that tell me about yourself question, the reason why they're asking it is they want to say, okay, is this person going to be a good fit for our particular team and our particular company and our particular culture? Um, 
And so the best way that you can answer that question is if you know a little bit about the company going in, and you should anyway, you should have done your research. If you have an interview with the company, you should do your research and you should see, okay, what are they like? What is their, what is their vibe? What is their culture? Um, you know, what is the, the, the vibe that you get from the team that you're interviewing for? Um, maybe even a little bit of uh, looking at the, the folks that you're interviewing with on LinkedIn, that kind of thing. Um, and so if you know the answers to a few of those questions, you can tailor your answer to that tell me about yourself question a little bit more. Um, and so, you know, for the tell me about yourself question, you also in general probably want to emphasize um, your ability to adapt, your ability to learn, um, your excitement about, um, <laughs> thank you, Porridge, for the bit. <laughs> um, so, so your ability to adapt, your ability to learn, uh, your excitement about the specific sort of skills that they're, that they're looking for in this um, position. Um, and so uh, you can say something like, um, you can say something like, uh, so I am, you know, a, uh, I'm a full stack software engineer and uh, I've recently really sort of ignited my passion for coding in general. Um, I have a history of working with, of uh, doing independent projects and working with clients and working in groups as well. Um, I really just like, you know, just learning about coding, learning about new concepts, learning new tools. Um, and you know, pursuing these sorts of projects in my free time. I have several really interesting projects on my GitHub that I'd be happy to show you. Um, and then also you can talk about you know, some hobbies that, that show that you have other interests outside of coding. But again, you just wanna emphasize like, man, I'm here to learn. I wanna be a part of your culture. Uh, I am stoked. Uh, let me catch up here. Uh, your puppy says, during my last interview, I was asked, if you were given a task without much direction, how would you handle it? I said I would Google until I understood. And if I couldn't figure out, I would ask for more direction. Absolutely. That's a fantastic answer, Poppy. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, hydrate the posture check, Porridge. Um, I left my drink over on the other table, but I'll do a posture check. Here we go. Um, yeah, my drink's over there. <laughs> but I'll grab it in a minute. Um, and yeah, but I love that answer, Poppy. Um, that's really great. Uh, this, especially the fact that you said you would Google it because a lot of folks think, oh, well, I should just know everything. I'm not allowed to Google. Um, Googling shows that I don't know stuff. Well, no, Googling shows that you're well aware of the things you don't know. And you're also efficient at finding the answers at finding the correct answer. Um, cause knowing how to Google is a skill and not everybody has that skill. Uh, you would be surprised at how many people just cannot Google, cannot find things on Google. And so if you can, if you're like, yeah, I can Google it, then you're going to be like, yes, that's awesome. I Google things all the time as a dev and all of my coworkers do too. I forget things all the time that I just have to keep Googling. <laughs> and then, but then I love the way that you followed that up though. You said that you would Google it first. And then if you couldn't find the answer, you would ask. And that's also shows that you're willing to, you know, ask for help too, because not everybody's willing to do that. Some people will just suffer in silence and grind and get it wrong and waste a lot of time. Uh, I made that mistake in my early career. Uh, in my first job, I just thought that asking for help was bad. And so I would just, you know, keep beating my head against the problem for way too long and cause a delay. Uh, Hoot says question four. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I understand the, the answer there, Hoot Dunce, but dealing with designer and bad designers and not web oriented. Are you saying that's how you would answer it? Or are you struggling with that question, Hoot? <laughs> hey, Filet. Filet says, hey, Mind Wolf, can I ask your advice on what to prioritize? I've been putting in 60 to 70 hour weeks. Oh goodness. And I don't have a lot of free time to work on projects. Should I just go for Banky and keep networking with people? Yeah. So you are probably going to want to have something in your portfolio that you can show. Um, it doesn't have to be super complicated. 
um, as long as it, you know, as long as each project in your portfolio is curated to show something different, right? You're like, what are you trying to convey with your portfolio? Well, you're trying to convey your skills. And so if you can have just, you know, maybe three or four interesting projects on your portfolio without having like a ton um, that, you know, in each of those projects to convey something different, like here's something that I can do here. here here's how I can, you know, use forms and database storage. Here's how I can use authentication. Here's how I can use, um, I don't know, uh, like Tailwind or something like that. Um, and just if you have those and you're ready to talk about them when somebody asks, because they will, they'll ask it to your GitHub. Um, if you can just have like those three or four excellent projects, really refined, beautiful projects on your portfolio, be ready to talk about them in detail. And then you can spend you know, your remaining time, what little time you have, um, you know, networking. Cause yeah, everybody has a different privilege of time, right? Some people have way more time than others. And it sounds like your time is very precious. Um, and so if you can just get those three or four projects, like really looking mm, stellar and quality over quantity, and then spend what little time you have, you know, just really focusing on the networking and making connections. I mean, that's what I would do. Um, but again, I, you know, everybody, has a different amount of time and I, you know, I can't tell you exactly what to do with your time. That's just what I would probably do. <laughs> Polymer says it's more important to know what you don't know than to know stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've said before that, uh, so I work with very experienced coworkers. They're all much more experienced than I am by like a lot. Um, until we got these new people on the team, I was by far the least experienced and the youngest person on my team. And I'm not saying like that, like, Ooh, look at me. I'm saying it like, you know, these people are like, I look at their skills and I'm like, holy crap. Um, but they're still like excited to learn new things. They are not like th these, these experienced people. They're not like, Ooh, I know everything. I don't have to learn anything. I'm the best. They're like, Oh, what's that thing you're doing? Ooh, that's new. I want to learn that. You know, and that's that's what's so important is knowing what you don't know and being excited to learn new stuff. Um, and there's a story I've shared before about one of my most experienced coworkers. I was talking to them on a call, um, and I was asking them for some help on some data I had pulled from the database. And so I just dropped it into a pivot table really quickly, just like to be like make sure the counts were correct on various categories and things. I just you know. 30 seconds. I just whipped up a pivot table and did some auto sums and just grouped it together. And I said, Hey, so does this look right to you? And there was just like silence on the other end of the line. And I was like, Oh crap, like I got it wrong. And my coworker was like, wait, how did you do that? I'm like, what, how, how did I do what? And I thought he was asking about the data and he was like, no, 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 no. How did you like just sum all that and group it all together so fast? And I said, I used a pivot table. And he said, what's a pivot table? And I was friggin' floored. And he was so excited to learn about pivot tables. And this dude has like, I don't know, three decades of experience in coding. Didn't know what pivot tables were. And so you never know what someone doesn't know, right? And, and he was, and I, we spent like the next hour just like talking about, here's how you make a pivot table. Here's what it, you know, here's how you do like, you know, sums and groups and, and rows and columns. And he was so freaking excited to learn this new thing. Um, and, you know, so you never know, right? You always should be open to learning new things and um, you never know what you don't know. <laughs> Pivot table, like from Excel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. So, okay. Yeah. What's pivot tables? Great question. So in Excel, um, pivot tables are um, essentially like, so you know what a table is, right? It has rows and columns and there's data in those rows and in those columns. What pivot tables allow you to do is drag fields into the rows and columns dynamically and then basically have the values change based on um, how you put that data together. So it's like, it's like a table, except you can drag the fields at will to create different types of groupings and sums based on what you drag in. You can also have multiple like levels of rows. So I could, so let's say I have um, different departments and then I have different sub departments. 
I could use the departments as the first grouping and then the sub departments as the second lower grouping. And then I could have the people in those departments as the values within the table itself. And so I, I could group them by department, then sub department, and then counts. And so pivot tables are a great skill to have. It's another, it's another awesome skill that can make you seem like a god <laughs> from, from when people don't know what it is. Yeah, and if you have any kind of background in like, you know, doing cubicle work or, you know, uh, in accounting, finance especially, they use them a lot. But in most fields, pivot tables can be really valuable. All right, I'm catching up with chat here. I've been talking for a long time. Hang on. Um, yeah, and Googling also shows that you're resourceful and willing to seek out answers on your own. Absolutely. Um, Hope says, I had tons of coworkers that don't know how to Google stuff. Yeah, right? I told you. Not everybody knows how to do it. But simple things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you if English is not your first language, then that, then that can make Googling even harder because so many results on the web are in English. Yeah. Um, CJ James asked about question number nine. They say, um, for number nine, do you think it's okay to use examples that aren't work related? I was going to share my experience of managing a softball team. Ooh, yeah, I would say yes. Um, because still you're managing a team, right? You're managing a team and managing a team looks very similar, whether you're at work or whether you're not at work. Um, and sometimes not being at work, managing a team can be harder because there's no sort of predefined rules of interaction, right? When you're at work, right, you have to, you're expected to be nice to your manager, otherwise you might get fired, right? <laughs> but when you're outside of work and you're in like a, you know, voluntary position, like a, managing a softball team or something like that, then anything goes, right? Somebody could, you know, just completely flip the bird at you and, you know, you can't fire them. There's there's no rules for rules of interaction. And so sometimes that kind of management could be even harder. Um, and that could be something that you even kind of weave into that story talking about like, um, you know, saying how, you know, outside of work management can be can look slightly different and could be more difficult. Um, so that's just another thing to consider when answering that question. But I, yeah, I would say that's valid. And it shows, and another thing, CJ, like Zena says, you know, it shows transferable skills. Uh, it shows how versatile you can be. Um, and it shows that you have interests, right? It shows some of the things that you enjoy, like softball. You enjoy softball so much that you were willing to manage a team, which not everybody would be willing to do. That's a major outside expenditure of your time, right? Hey, Latjor, welcome. <laughs> Uh, WJS says, can we put our Tetris project on our portfolio? So when you're looking at, so if you're wondering what they're asking about in my last stream, we built Tetris using, uh, the can using the canvas API and vanilla JavaScript. So check that out. If you're interested, it's, it was, it was a long one, but it was really fun. Uh, and we ended up with playable Tetris at the end. Um, so, um, but going back to that, as far as putting it on your portfolio, obviously that's up to you. Uh, however, I would highly suggest, you know, so Leon um, doesn't really recommend putting games on your portfolio uh, unless you're being, unless you're going for like a game dev position. Um, it's up to you how you want to convey yourself on your portfolio. Um, if you want to show off that you're able to use the Canvas API, um, maybe you could build like a different type of animation instead. Um, Tetris might be fairly common and um, maybe a little too common to be included on your portfolio. Because again, your portfolio is supposed to, um, you know, showcase your unique abilities and showcase you as being a sort of a standout and, and someone that they really want to hire. So I don't know that that putting that specific Tetris project might not be a good choice unless, unless you really, really wanted to highly customize it and make it unique in some way. Oh, uh, Latjor says they have pivot tables in pandas now too. So if you didn't know pandas is a uh, package in Python, which is very common as well for, for analysis, for data analysis. So that's awesome that they have them in pandas because pivot tables can be really, the pivot tables are one of the best tools that you can use for any type of data analysis outside of like literally 
querying a database directly. I use the lot journal says I use them a lot as a data analyst. Yeah. So <laughs> I was actually a data analyst as well uh, for several years before I became a developer. So that's why I'm pretty familiar with pivot tables. Like I said, yeah, they're fantastic for that. Uh, Kid Solo suggested a poll. Um, how often did you, so their, their poll request is how often did you find yourself looking at Code Wars answers? Okay, yeah, uh, I can put together a poll. Um, we're gonna take a break in about 20 minutes. So um, I'll probably put together the poll over the break. Um, and then, you know, when we come back from the break, I'll have the poll up and folks can answer. Uh, Red Sly says, I think a lot of tech jobs have been outsourced, especially so that the dollar is strong right now. Sure, I don't deny that. Um, however, you also have to think about um, the fact that tech jobs are not going away. Um, there's no such thing as like reduction in technology. Like there's no, you know, people aren't giving up their websites and people aren't stopping making apps and people aren't, um, you know, businesses aren't saying, oh, I don't want to use technology anymore. I'm going to go back to printing paper and doing ledgers, you know, <laughs> in paper ledger books. Like, no, that's not happening. Uh, what is happening is every business, no matter how small, is becoming a tech company. They have to or they die. Um, Every company has to start adopting, you know, software solutions to manage their operations. They have to get online. They have to, you know, establish a social social media presence. They have to build an app. They have to build a website. All of those things are becoming pretty much indispensable. Um, and so, sure, you can see jobs moving overseas, especially at large companies. But think about how many small companies are out there that, and I'm, by small, I'm meaning like, not as big as Twitter and Google and Facebook, right? <laughs> That's what, I mean, if you think outside of Fang, um, there's so many other companies out there and those companies are gonna wanna hire in the US because they don't wanna deal with, with visas and you know all the things that, all the extra stuff that comes into hiring internationally and all that sort of thing. Um, and same thing in other countries, they're just gonna wanna hire within their country. And so, you know, there's still plenty of jobs out there. It's yeah, there's no shortage, especially when you think outside of Silicon Valley and Fang and like the, the popular tech companies in the news. So for me, I work at I work for a university. Um, I work for a university in the US in the US. Um, it's a public university. Um, and, you know, people just don't think about all the other jobs that are out there outside of Fang. They just don't. And there's so many. I would I would highly suggest looking at, you know, unconventional jobs like universities and um you know the administrative side of schools and and that sort of thing and and small businesses and you know all those things your poppy says i did a portfolio review and leon told me only stuff i got paid to do should go on there and obviously my hundred dollars projects everything else looks boot campy sure yep absolutely um if you've gotten paid to do, you know, a couple projects, put those on there because those can be good references. You know, if they if they do reach out to the people that you did the work for, you know, they can sing your praises and all that. Um, and then, yeah, and your hundred hours project as well. So keep it keep it quality over quantity. Yeah. Thank you for the follow, uh, Altajiro. Yeah, and there's new tools out there like ChatGPT, absolutely. But <laughs> a lot of what I've been seeing about ChatGPT is that it will give answers that sound good, but are completely wrong. I mean, Stack Overflow has banned ChatGPT for now. Um, just it's not there yet. It looks good, but it just isn't there. Um, and another thing, too, is that a lot of the work that you're going to do as a dev is less about solving simple problems. Like, cause you can just Google that stuff, right? Somebody's done it before. You can Google it and just grab the code and dump it in. It's more about helping systems talk to each other. Um, at least in my experience so far is that it seems like the, the, the way tech is going is that we're gonna have all these microservices 
which can do a lot of things, but you need people to help those microservices actually work together and talk to each other. Uh, and that's just not something that AI can do. Um, it can't account for all the vagaries of environments and um, weirdness and setup and meeting with the business and, and you know, all these really human foibles and, and failures that we have. It just can't, it just can't account for that. It can't make systems talk to each other. Um, and so, you know, a lot of what I do in my day job is making systems talk to each other, moving data from one system to another and transforming that data so it meets the customer's needs. AI can't do that. Yeah, outside of Twitter, um, <laughs> outside of Twitter, yeah, there's there's been lots of layoffs, but, uh, you know, again, it's, the overall market is only going in one direction. It And things are, there's always going to be a little, like, you know, waivers along the way, but the overall market is only going one direction, and that's up. Yeah, cyber, that's a great point. Cyber security is a huge um, consideration. Mitigating risk, keeping things close to home, so to speak, um, you know, not crossing borders with, with um, sensitive information. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great consideration, Lat Jordan. I hadn't thought about that. Thank you for the follow, Disorgers. <laughs> Ryan says, uh, chat GPT, um, help me with a function, but I still had to debug the answer. Yep, you still got to have that human intelligence to use your common sense and be like, okay, this is, this looks good, but does it actually make sense? Does it work? Does it work in the context that I'm trying to use it? Yeah. So I think it can be a, it could be a great asset. Um, but again, still just another tool in the toolbox to use. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Vail, Colorado. <laughs> I wonder where they're from. Uh, Zena says, I live in a college town where my old university has monopolized the entire city practically. And they have the audacity to offer engineers way below average salary. Yeah. So one thing you will potentially discover is, is that universities do pay lower salaries. I know I could be making more in the private sector. Um, but um, at the point when I got this job at the university, I was pretty much burnt out from a previous private sector job that had completely ruined my mental health. Um, and now I come to this university job with good set hours, wonderful benefits. I mean, like, it's insane. Like, I pay nothing for like, doctor visits and, you know, um, dental and vision. Um, it's just, my benefits package is nuts. Um, and if you're in the U S that's a big deal. Um, and you know, I get, I, I got my master's degree for free. Um, I get a 10% retirement contribution by my employer, like with no obligation on my part, they just give me 10%. Like it's bonkers. And so, I mean, for me, it's worth it, but it might not be worth it for everybody. Lajor says, my move, are you guys hiring? Um, well, we just hired several people, um, but I do believe there's are, there are, um, you know, positions open uh, at my university. Um, so if you want, feel free to um, uh, shoot me a message on the Discord if you would like to, or here on Twitch, shoot me a message and we can see what you're interested in. Clay James says, I like the sassy responses chat GPT gives sometimes. Makes me feel bad for bothering it. <laughs> well, you know that any uh, automated system that learns from humans uh, is is going to end up sassy, especially if it's learning from internet humans. Oh, and Letty, thank you so much for the resub. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Letty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am getting plenty of experience at this university job, and I genuinely love my team. Uh, I think that's really important too. Um, I genuinely enjoy, like I, I'm excited to go to work tomorrow. I don't know how many people can say that, but I'm, ex I'm, I'm thinking about some of the things that I want to do at work tomorrow. And I'm excited because I'm like, Ooh, I'm thinking, Ooh, I can, maybe I can bring one of the new people. And like, we found an issue with some, with some code over, you know, um, last week. And I'm excited because I can maybe bring one of the new people and we can work on it together. And I can show this new person, like, you know, here's how we might solve this. And, 
um, like I, I'm excited to fix this issue that we found. And so I, I think that's kind of unique. <laughs> uh, spaghetti developer asks, what is Banky? Well, Banky is what I have right here on my screen. So Banky is a bank of interview questions. Um, Behave, both behavioral and technical questions. Um, I'm sure somebody can drop the link. I think I had the link and then I don't have it on my clipboard anymore. So <laughs> somebody wants to drop the link, um, not to my copy, but to the but to Leon's copy so that you can pull it down and edit it. I think I've made some edits to this one, so you probably don't want this one, but um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's common interview questions um, that you will see in interviews. And so if you can, if you can practice these questions and answer them confidently, um, you will be able to ace every interview you get. Uh, Latger says, oh, the 100 devs discord. Yeah, so if you want um, to get a link to the 100 devs discord, you can do exclamation point Leon um, L E O N exclamation point L E O N in chat. And that will give you a link to the discord. Uh, your puppy says what AI was shut off for all the racism. I think that was the Tay AI. Microsoft had an AI a few years ago in the early days of this sort of thing. Uh, I think it was called Tay. Kitsola says, I dread going to work tomorrow. Oh, that's too bad. I've had that experience. Uh, I have, which makes me value this experience that I have now where I really love my work. Um, it makes that, that makes me value this experience so much more when I've had that experience where I was literally having anxiety attacks, walking into work every day, like chest tightness and, and headaches, just walking into work. Um, this makes me feel so much better. Also, I work from home, which is, 100% remote, which is pretty freaking amazing. So my desk is like two rooms that way. <laughs> and I have a I have an electric blanket and it keeps me warm and I can make tea. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Red Fly says, have you seen the lifestyle of freelancers who live in Bali? I have heard about that. Like, um, uh, like, uh, what do they call them? Digital nomads. I've, I've heard that's getting harder to do though. Um, cause there's so many of them, but I'm sure there's still ways to do it. Uh, CJ James says, how much time did you spend on the CS section of Banky? I'll be real. I don't spend hardly any time on like the actual technical questions. Um, just because in my experience, when I got hired as a dev, um, and as a senior dev, so so in my interview for a senior role, there was one technical question. There, there was like, what was it? Uh, there was three or four rounds of interviews. And throughout those three or four rounds of interviews, there was only one technical question. And they asked me to look at a statement, SQL statement that was already written and tell them what it did. Like just walk through the statement and read it and be like, here's what's happening. And that was the only technical question. The rest of the questions were this kind of stuff right here. Behavioral, that was it. All of this, this was three rounds of interviews worth of questions. So honestly, if you're gonna focus on anything, I would say focus on this. I mean, still, yeah, you can still review the, the technical questions, but don't spend a ton of time on those. Um, I mean, it, they can be helpful, but there's no guarantee you'll be asked them. There is probably a guarantee that you'll be asked at least one of these behavioral questions. Spaghetti says, so if I never started a project or initiative on my own, does that mean I should remain unemployed? No, no, absolutely not. Um, so when I was hired, um, I was hired as a dev before 100 devs. Um, so I didn't even know what GitHub was. <laughs> and so, I mean, I was, but I was able to answer these behavioral questions based on my past experiences and answer them well and fluently. And, and I didn't know what the bank was. I didn't have any of that. I literally Googled common interview questions, printed them out on paper, wrote the answers down, 
and practiced the hell out of them until I was confident and felt like I was conveying my best self. Um, so no, if you don't have any independent projects, that doesn't mean you should remain unemployed. However, having independent projects can help you. It, it really can't hurt you. It can only help you to show like, hey, look, these are like some cool skills that I have. Here's something fun that I built. Um, but do you absolutely have to have them? No, you don't got to have anything. But all it can do is open more doors for you while you're looking for that job. Consola says, well, literally, literally the thought of my job makes me want to cry and so does being where I live. Again, yep, I've had that experience. And it can be hard, but eventually I just had to bail. I was like, nope, can't do this anymore. I am mentally crushed. And so, yeah, I had to bail. And I had to, I ended up moving to a completely different state. Um, and it worked out. Yes, Andrea says, that, yeah, the, one of the benefits of working from home is that I can check on my kittens. Yes. Yep. And yeah, select star from customer. What does this do? <laughs> yeah, so the SQL statement was more complicated than that. But it was still definitely something that I was able to walk through with some level of confidence. Um, just having a general background in SQL, you know, basic SQL, I was able to be like, yep, I feel like I can read this and tell you what it does. But I think, again, the, the driving, um, the driving uh, factor was not that I could read a SQL statement. The driving factor was that I could answer these questions that I have here on the screen. Arkashi <laughs> says, select the star customer, duh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> select star customer, find the best customer, please, SQL. Yes, that is exactly what that does. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, and polymerization has a great point. You will always, you will always get behavioral questions in an interview, and you might get technical questions. Yep, that's a great way to think about it. <laughs> MC Steel Toad says, never started a project on my own equals team player. <laughs> hey, some of this stuff is all about the spin, right? So you might have an experience where maybe you didn't handle this. Like one of these questions here says something like, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, number 10. Look at number 10. Tell me about a situation when you made a mistake at work. What happened exactly? And how did you deal with it? What steps did you take to improve the situation? So they are literally asking for a time when you left up, right? And so the way that you answer this question, it all depends on how you spin it. Everybody's made mistakes, right? Everybody's made mistakes at work. We've all screwed up. Um, but what they're looking for here is, again, remember, it's all about why are they asking this? Why they're asking this sort of thing is to say, number one, you're going to be honest about past mistakes that you might have made. Number two, is that you can reflect back on that mistake without feeling um, like, you know, uh, without, without um, getting super like emotional and, and super, um, you know, or super angry about it, that, you, that you're managing your emotions and you can look back on things, mistakes you've made through a clear lens. And then number three, how did you handle it? What they want to see is that you understood what went wrong. Um, you grew from it and you were able to ensure that it didn't happen again. So again, that's how you need to spin your answer to that question to give them what they're looking for. So when you look at all these questions, it's important to think about, okay, why are they asking these specific things? They're asking them for a reason. They're obviously important. So why are they asking? What is the motive behind this question? Um, and if you, can, if you can think about it in those terms, you can tailor your answers much more easily to say what, to, 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 to reflect your own experiences, but then give them what they want. CJ Zim says, wow, I've been spending too much time on the tech questions. Yeah. Report, get the, make sure that you are friggin' ace at all of these behavioral questions and then spend time on the tech questions when you have time. You should have, you should, if I ask, if, if somebody asked you any of these questions here on this list, you should be able to think of an answer in a few, in a few seconds. Consola says, yeah, basically where I am now. 
which is why I'm doing all of this just gets hard when your mind is in the way. Yeah. Like, like in any, um, bad situation, it takes, so being in any bad situation, whether it's work or home or relationship, um, takes a huge mental toll on you, right? It, it makes you tired. Um, it takes, it makes you emotionally and physically tired. Um, and so adding more work, like, you know, practicing questions and looking for jobs, adding more work to the top of that pile is really difficult because you're already tired. Um, and so it's important to just kind of remember, okay, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to improve my situation. Um, I'm doing this so that future me <laughs> will never have to feel this way again. Uh, and that's the hard hurdle to get over because it's easy. It, 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 it takes far less energy to just stay in the same spot, right? Uh, to not have to change anything. Um, and so when you're already like emotionally, mentally, and physically tired, um, that's the easier option. And it's very, um, sometimes it's difficult to get out of that. So I feel that been there. Definitely. And Paradise says I had to bail on a toxic workplace before it was great for my mental health. Not so much in my wallet, but my health is more important. Yeah. And in the end, having good health will save you money. So, yeah. Uh, Witty Lurker has a great question. Witty Lurker says, so talking about the workplace that where things did not go necessarily well, um, they said, how did you talk about that workplace when you were asked in interviews? And yeah, that's a great question. So how I talked about that workplace was I did not badmouth my former employer. Um, I was, I, I looked back on that experience as objectively as I could and tried to think about, okay, I worked at that place for three years. I learned stuff. I learned a lot of things. I, I learned a lot of new skills. I led projects because, because that workplace was so understaffed. We all wore many hats, as they say. And so I led projects when I was probably way too experienced to do so. I led a team. Um, I got great at troubleshooting things on the fly. Um, I learned how to fix errors in production. Um, I, you know, I dealt with difficult coworkers and, and all those, those are all things that can provide answers to these behavioral questions, leading projects, leading teams, dealing with difficult people, um, making mistakes, having a difficult workplace does give you a lot of fodder to find the answers to these questions. And so I didn't focus on the neg negative experience. What I focused on is leveraging that experience and the things that I learned to answer these questions objectively, to, to say, okay, how did I better myself in that role? Because you, you, even if it's a sucky workplace, you're constantly going to be learning and growing in some way. So how did you better yourself in that role <laughs> and then get out of it? <laughs> Polymerization says, if you pass the vibe check, the tech recruiter will make it easy for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Spaghetti brings up a point, uh, brings up a good point here. What if I don't remember that time when I did a mistake? I don't even remember what I coded yesterday. That's fair. Some of us don't remember everything that we've ever done, right? You're not going to remember all the projects you've participated in, all the code that you wrote, all the teams that you might have led. So one thing that I would suggest doing is when you are working on something, whether that's out at workplace or for personal projects, write down what you did, just like a bullet point. Like I did this, or so if something stands out, like if you learn something for a project, like a new skill or a tool or a software, just write it down. It, it, it could be in a physical notebook. It could be in like a Google doc or a OneNote or something. Um, just make a bullet point about it. And then that way, when you're coming back to build your resume um, or to answer these questions, you can go back to that document and be like, oh, yeah, I forgot like a year ago. I mean, I did do a little bit with Tailwind or something like that. Or I did, you know, learn some Python and I, I just come, I haven't used it since then, but I did use like I did use it for that project. Um, and there you go. That's, you know, that can give you a quick, succinct list of things that you have done. Um, and of your accomplishments. And it's something that you just kind of build up over time. And so I've definitely done that. I had a pad of paper, like a physical pad of paper and like, you know, write down the, like when I do something interesting or new or cool, um, just write it down. 
and interestingly, even though I'm a developer, I don't do well with like digital forms of like note taking. I generally have to physically write things down. So find out, you'll find what works for you. Red Sly says, spin, spin, spin. Why no one believes a word Americans say. Hey, that might be a fair assessment, right? But it's all about the game, right? And here at least the game is, is that you need to portray yourself in an interview. You need to portray yourself in the best possible light as someone that they want to hire, as someone that's going to work on their team. So this is what the game is. You can choose whether to play it or not, right? And it's not that you should go out there and lie, but it's that you should learn how to portray yourself in the best possible light, highlight your accomplishments, and show that you are a good fit for their team. That'll get you hired. Hey, Madeline, good to see you. Mirabic says, I don't see mistakes as mistakes, but learning opportunities, sure. Letty says, I always learn more when I make mistakes because I need to analyze why the mistake happened. Yeah, and that's a great um, sentiment to have, right? So um, something happened to me at work um, where I was still fairly new on the team and I was building a um, an ETL mapping. You don't have to know what that is, um, but basically it's just like a, it's moving data from one place to another and doing some manipulations on it in the middle. Um, and so I built the whole thing out and I, 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 and I kind of used the first one as a template and I built several of them. I, I had to build more than one. And so I was just like, okay, boop, 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 built them all out. And then we did a walkthrough, a code walkthrough in front of the whole group. <laughs> and I realized I had made a fundamental mistake um, with the first one that I did. And so the, the group helped me fix the problem. And then I realized, I was like, well, dang, I've been doing it like that on all of my subsequent um, ETL workflows. And so what that made me do is go back and look at the work I had done previously, reanalyze it, say, oh, okay, I understand, you know, why this is a problem and now I can fix it on all of my work and I won't ever do it again. And so, yeah, mistakes are a great way to sort of give you that additional context for why something is needed, what happens when it's not there, what happens when it's not present, uh, and then helps cement it in your brain. So absolutely, yeah. Now, Spaghetti says, I just make up complete lies for all these questions. There's nothing stopping you. However, the risk that you run is that you're going to get called on it and you won't know how to answer. And then they're going to say, oh, this person is not truthful. I'm not, I'm not going to hire them. So whatever you say, I, you know, I'm not going to say that you should do something or you shouldn't do something in an interview. You can do whatever the heck you want. Um, but the risk is that if you are not truthful, um, then you're going to get called on it. If not during the interview, then maybe later. So, yeah. What I learned is often a better answer than what I did. Sure. Yeah. Blackout says, just have a Git repo and add a good commit message, what you did in real life. There you go. Hey, whatever note taking works best for you, that is what you can use. If, if Git commit messages is your jam, then absolutely do that. <laughs> Everybody has a different thought process. Yep, yeah, we're all salespeople and the product is you. Absolutely. It's you. Yep. You just in that in that interview process, you just gotta sell yourself. Falling failing forward, sure. <laughs> uh was it really uh, spaghetti developer says, was it related to null values handling? No, I believe. Um, it was related to creating, um, uh, to creating like branching paths for, so when you're doing an ETL, whether, you, whether a record is new, when a record is new, you want to insert it. When a record is changing, you want to update the existing record. Um, and, you know, and then of course, disregard records that have no change. Uh, and so I was, I made a mistake in that branching path. And so it wasn't um, handling record updates correctly. It wasn't, it wasn't fetching if there was an existing record and we, I was just supposed to be updating it. It wasn't fetching that correctly. 
Um, so yeah, I believe that was the problem, if I recall, <laughs> off the top of my head. Oh, thank you for the follow, Blackout Roman. Oh, and we got another hydrate there. Okay, it, we're about. We're, it's time for a break, so I need to do a poll. There's somebody requested a poll earlier. Um, Letty, oh, sorry, no, uh, who, uh, Kid Solo. They requested a poll, so I'm gonna set one up over the break. Um, and then I will also get my drink, which is over there on the table, because this is not the first hydrate that folks have requested. So I'll grab that as well over the break. And then when I get back, I'll hydrate for y'all. Uh, Latra says, uh, I need an ETL project for my portfolio. Do you have any tips on a good project? Uh, so I've really only done ETL like on the at the enterprise level. So working with very large data sources. Um, so I don't know that I have like, I don't know that I could advise on like personal ETL projects. Um, I would suggest uh, looking up maybe some tutorials and seeing the types of projects that they're doing and then build out your own. Um, Cause yeah, I've really only done ETL at the enterprise level which is probably looks somewhat different than like small personal ETL projects. Yeah, I'm working with like, you know, several million road data sources and, and all those. And, and yeah, it, it, yeah, I don't know that I, I can't really think of how to make that in, how to do that in small form. <laughs> um, okay, last one before the break, because I think it's a really good one. Um, CJ asks, would it be all right to use the same situation to answer more than one of these questions if it fits the context. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have a single situation that you can pull different aspects of or different details from uh, in order to answer different questions, yeah, 100%. Um, I have absolutely done that. Um, and, you know, you might, you might for example, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. see, there was one about... So this one about conflicts, dealing with conflict in the team is very similar, could or could be very similar to like number 11, working with someone who's not completing their work. So you having conflict on the team could be related to a situation when your coworker maybe wasn't completing their work, right? Those are the same, those could be the same situation. And so, yeah, you could absolutely just take the same situation and pull different aspects of it to answer two different questions. Okay, and uh, Spaghetti Developer there has a suggestion on how you could maybe be, um, yeah, how you can maybe put, put together a small ETL project. Sure. I have to take a shower. <laughs> All right, so break time. Let's take a break. Five minutes. I'm going to set up the poll that was um, requested earlier, and that is... Um, looking at how, how y'all handle uh, Code Wars questions. So I'll, I'll put that together uh, and you'll see it on your screen um, after the break. And I'm also gonna grab my drink from the other table. So five minutes. And go get up, stretch, hydrate, whatever you gotta do and uh, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation, which I always love these conversations. They're always great. I love it. Um, so I'm looking forward to continuing. So see you back here in five.
All right, folks, we've got about a minute left in the break, so come on back when you're ready. Um, I'm just about to got the go got the poll going. All right, folks, and we're back. I'm just finishing up the poll question here. It's hard to fit it within the character limit. Um, I am almost done. <laughs> right, how often, uh, how do I want to phrase this? How often, um, All right, so I had to shorten the question a little bit, um, but you should be able to see it at the top of the chat window. And what we're asking there is, so if you if you click on the um, top at the top of your chat window, you should see um, the question there, and it's how often do you reveal Code Wars answers? And what that means is, so how often do you just are you unable to answer a Code Wars question, um, and then essentially like click reveal and just reveal the answer instead of answering it yourself. So that's the, that's the question, if it's not clear. All right. Okay, and that's a 10 minute poll. So you got 10 minutes to think about your answer. Uh, any answer is fine. Um, Spaghetti says SQL hope code wars. Well, whatever, like, and, and, uh, so yeah, RDT, and that's, that's a perfectly valid answer. Um, go ahead and click on the poll and submit your answers on the poll there. Um, SQL code wars. I've done a few SQL code wars. Um, most of the code wars that I've done have been JavaScript because that's what I'm actively learning right now. Um, I feel like, you know, I do SQL all day at work. Um, if I'm going to practice something, I, I get plenty of SQL practice at work. If I'm going to practice something, it should be, you know, the thing that I'm actively learning outside of work, which is JavaScript. So that's the that's been the majority of my um, code wars. But I've done a few SQL ones just for fun, just to see what they're like. Uh, and being on eight queues is not a bad thing, right? It 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 doesn't. That's the one thing I don't like about code wars is that there's so much emphasis on like levels. Um, and as long as you're practicing, it doesn't really matter where you are. And looking at Code Wars answers, as long as you give it a good faith effort to solve the problem, um, if you have to look at the answer, that's fine. Um, then just make sure that you understand why the answer, like how they got to that answer, right? So you look at the answer, you sort of reverse engineer it to be like, oh, okay, I understand. So they use this method or they, you know, did it this way or, or you know, there's, here's the one way to do it. Here's another way to do it, right? And then take that in, learn it, internalize it, and then come back and try to solve the question again later. And then you'll probably get it right. Um, and so, yeah, looking at the answer is not a bad thing as long as you are uh, honest in your attempt. And then when you do reveal the answer, understand why the answer is what it is, uh, and then practice it and do the question again later. Andrea says, I think I spend far too long on answering the questions. I need to set a time out for myself. Yeah, 20 minutes. You shouldn't spend more than 20 minutes on a question. Um, and then, you know, 20 minutes are up. That's fine. Take what you've done so far. 
and then look at the answer, compare it to what you did, and then, you know, figure out the gap if there is one. Um, maybe change your approach and then come back and do the question again later. And Cabrandi says, the hunt is making me forget how to code. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a real danger, right? Is that you spend so much time on the, on the networking portion that you don't practice the actual application of coding, right? And networking is absolutely important. And there's no denying that. Um, but you should also make sure that, you know, you're keeping your portfolio up to date, um, that you're still trying to take a little bit of time to, you know, work, refine your hundred hours project, or, um, even just do a little tutorial on something new. Um, you know, just kind of keep your, keep your brain working, keep your brain fresh. Spaghetti says, I wonder what the hardest SQL code wars question looks like. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would imagine it's probably something with like, you know, writing a stored procedure to do something complex. Um, yeah. The hardest SQL question is only 3Q. Yeah, so with SQL, I mean, I think they're probably limited by the Code Wars environment with how much you can do um, as far as like what the Code Wars environment is capable of handling. Um, so that's probably a limitation with that sort of thing. Because, you know, if the Code Wars isn't going to have like a massive, you know, a massive data warehouse that they're, they're going to let you mess with. Um, so there, there's probably some limitations there. <laughs> but yeah, Code Wars is um, Code Wars is tricky, right? Is it's easy to get too invested in like, ooh, the levels, right? Like, ooh, I'm gonna be a you know a third three Q or ooh, you know, you know second Q or bust, right? And you just grind it out without. And but like, yeah, Code Wars are great because it teaches you how to solve common questions, but. Again, most interviews are not going to be Code Wars exclusive. <laughs> They're going to be mostly what I have up here on the screen, which is behavioral questions. So it's, you know, they're, they're fun. Code Wars are fun to solve because they are, um, they're, they're finite, right? You solve it, you get, and you get points. You get a little, hooray, I got points, you know? When you answer one of these questions, nobody's giving you points and, and there's no right answer. So that's far less satisfying than solving a Code Wars. Um, and so it's deceptively um, easy to get sucked into the Code Wars grind or the leap code grind as well, um, when really this is more what it's all about. Yeah. So what other um, what other questions do we have about about these behavioral questions or um, how to answer them or what questions do you have about maybe your personal background and how it could be fitted into these types of questions. But like, do you have, so um, does anybody feel like their background is just not applicable? Like that they cannot take their background and use it to answer these questions? I'd be curious. If you solve real world problems, you can get some coins, yeah. <laughs> But there is a level of abstraction there. It's it usually it doesn't happen immediately. You know, it might ha only happen once every two weeks or once at the end of the month. So yeah, you don't get that immediate gratification, and that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah. I had a little like the Mario coin sound go off in my head when I read that. But <laughs> ding! <laughs> it made me think. I don't know if anybody's seen the the Mario Brothers, the new Mario Brothers trailer that just came out a few days ago, and the little um. The little toad guys look like they, they apparently make their money by literally like, you know, hitting the coin blocks. And yeah, unfortunately that's not how it works in real life. I don't know, I'm, I'm actually fairly stoked for that movie. Uh, Dr. Moto says, have you talked about spec work? So by spec work, do you mean like writing specs or um, doing work on spec or what, um, can you, uh, refine the, that question a little bit, and I, I'm happy to answer it. I just want to make sure I understand. Ah, okay. Part of the interview doing free work or a take-home project. Yeah, so that does happen sometimes. They're going to have you, they're, they're, they'll give you something to work on. Um, and it... Those can vary like in complexity, I think, as far as like basic, you know, skill checks, like making sure like, oh, can, you know, do you know how to um, get data from an API? 
Like, I mean, that's, I feel like that's pretty legit. Like build us a, you know, a, a something with a form that takes data from an API, right? Okay, that's fair. Um, as far as like, oh, build this app for us. I think if they're asking for something like that, then you should say, okay, my, my freelance rates are X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, and then is there a pipeline for, for hire after I do this freelance work for you and get paid for it? Like, um, I think you gotta be reasonable, you know, make sure that they're being reasonable about the work that they're asking you to do. Is it a skill check or is it like build this thing for free for us? Um, that's yeah, that could be a little bit dangerous, but I think that's like a, you know, personal evaluation uh, you know, you have to make sure that you are cognizant of your worth and that your time is worth money. Um, and so whether or not you ask to be compensated for that time, um, is something you should consider given the nature of the work that they give you. <laughs> Chris says they shared a discord call with a big Mario fan that didn't like the trailer. Ah, I mean, there's so many, I don't know. I feel like anytime there's something fun coming out for a franchise that you enjoy, if it looks like there was a good faith effort put into it, I mean, I always give it a chance, right? I'm not going to like completely, disregard something based on just a trailer but hey i used to like the original mario brothers movie so what the hell do i know so cabrani says if you have too many interviews if you sorry if you have many interviews going on and one or two are asking for take homes and more rounds is it okay to drop out i can't make the decision for you of course it's a, it's fine to prioritize your time and um, decide what's most important to you, right? Um, <laughs> oh, the poll is over. And the top answer for how often do you reveal code where the answer is was sometimes, <laughs> which I think is fair. And I think reflects on the fact that um, we all do it sometimes, right? There's always going to be questions we can't answer. Um, and you know, not everybody's going to be able to answer every single question every single time. Sometimes you might have to Google. Sometimes you might have to reveal the answer. Um, all of which are valid ways to answer questions in real life on the job, right? You are not going to know the answer every single time, nor should you try, I guess. Nor should you, Nobody's going to want somebody on their team who's that one person that just pretends that they know everything, right? I've worked with people like that, where they, they just pretend that they know everything and if somebody else gives them the answer, they'll pretend it's theirs, right? That's just, that's not a good person that you want to work with. You want someone that's going to be willing to admit when they're wrong and admit when they don't know someone and credit or cre admit when they don't know something and credit other people for assisting them, right? So that's the kind of person that people want to work with. <laughs> um, so sorry, Cabrani, back to your question. So is it okay to drop out? It's always okay to drop out of an interview if you don't feel like it's worth the time that you have available, right? But you are shutting that door, right? You're ending that channel of communication um, and you're closing that door. You're not gonna get that job if you drop out. However, you may legitimately just not have the bandwidth to go through a protracted process. It, it, your, so your question was, is it okay to drop out? Yeah, it's always okay to drop out. That's not a decision that I can necessarily make for you. Um, that's a, just a personal decision and just know that, yes, you're closing that door. However, if giving you that extra time to pursue these other opportunities is going to be more worthwhile, then absolutely do that. Yeah. You have a coworker that's like that spaghetti. <laughs> I feel like we've all encountered somebody like that. You know, they, they feel like they got to be always the best in the, you know, it's, it comes with the territory, right? Any, in any profession, you're going to have people that value their, that, that, that feel like they, they only have worth if they are the best. Um, and it always makes me a little bit sad for them because if you never open up your, if you never open yourself up to learning, then you never grow, right? I love being the most inexperienced person on the team, being the, the freshest person on the team, the newest person on the team, because that just gives me every opportunity 
to learn from all of my coworkers all the time. And um, I'll admit that um, I used to kind of be that kind of person that always wanted to pretend to know stuff all the time. Um, personal admission, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to be that person. I felt like, oh crap, you know, I got to hide the fact that I don't know something. I got to pretend like model along and be like, ah, oh, yes. Oh, I knew that. Yes, of course. Of course. I knew that the whole time. Yeah. And that's just a really stressful way to live because <laughs> then you're always internally freaking out. Like what if somebody figures out that I didn't know that? Or what if, you know, what if somebody asked me a follow-up question on that? And I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. It's just, it's really stressful. So it's much less stressful to just be like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Maybe later, would you mind, um, you know, explaining that a little bit more? I'd love to hear more about that and learn more about that. And then you learn a new thing without having to pretend it. <laughs> ah, yes, I see. Yes. <laughs> Now, I legit used to be that way a little bit. Um, now I'm just like, screw it, I'm going to ask. Like, wait, why does that work? <laughs> How does that work? How did you do that? Like, that's that's way more fun to do, is to, to legitimately learn stuff. Oh, Ube, Maka, Ube, Ube Makapun. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I probably butchered that. But thank you so much for the sub. And they, subs they subscribed with Prime, which means it didn't cost them anything. Um, and the best part is that they cost Jeff Bezos money, which is just better than anything else. We're going to make him have to sell his cowboy hat so he can go to space again. Um, he wants to go back to space? Sorry, all those Prime subs costing him too much money. Going to have to sell that cowboy hat. Reveal the chrome dome. High Priest says, I have a couple of people that say that the only true software, engineer, software engineers work for FANG companies. The other ones are wannabes. Pfft, wannabe what? I don't want to work for a FANG company. No way. That sounds, that sounds like a pretty hellish existence. I mean, like constant crunch, overwork. You know that like if you're working at FANG, you know that you've got, you know, 6,000 people waiting in the wings that would love to take your job. And so... What, what power do you have? You have no power. You just have to take whatever your employee gives you, your employer gives you just to keep your job. I mean, like, that sounds miserable. I don't want to work for Fang. And working for Fang does not define your skill as a software engineer. I would never even try for Fang um, because I don't want to work there. <laughs> I want to work for, you know, small companies that value my work-life balance, value my time, um, give me good benefits. And at 5 p.m., let me stop working and go play video games. That's what I want. <laughs> Spaghetti developer says, this person, does, so this know-it-all person at their work, they learn a lot, but everything they learn is something new. They talk about it as, as if everybody is supposed to know all that already. Yeah, you get those people, too, that uh, can't uh, really experience anything outside of their own personal sphere. That's rough, too. Indubitably. <laughs> yeah, and some people are just a little bit oversharers too, right? Sometimes they'll, they have this nugget of knowledge that they just want to share so bad. And yeah, and then they have to drop it in conversation. Yeah, you get that too sometimes. It's easier to get free knowledge by just telling people I don't know anything. Ah. But you can, so you, it's legit, like not knowing about a topic is, is perfectly legit. Um, but again, it's kind of how you, how you respond to that, right? Instead of saying, I have no idea about anything. What you might say is, wow, that sounds really interesting. I would love to learn more about that. Are you willing to share with me some more about that topic? Oh, Gamer Woman 3D, thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> and we're another notch closer to Bezos selling his hat. Much I need to have like a little hat o meter like on the screen, like how we get closer to Jeff Bezos selling his hat. And then in the end, like the hat explodes. I don't know. Society, when can we stop Jeff? <laughs> oh. 
Zena says, it must be so hard for those people to try to prove themselves to people who don't give AF. Like I said, yeah. Like, pretending to be, like, the smartest person in the room is exhausting. So stressful. I might as well just, I, I much prefer being that person, like, oh, wow, I want to learn more about that. Or, ooh, I didn't know that before. Tell me more. You know, that's much more fun. Thank you for the follow, Rafa DFL. And Blackout says, we can just pretend to work and play video games all day long. Might be fun in the short term. Probably not a good idea in the long term because, again, you're not learning. One of the most crucial things about being a dev is that you, you keep, you, you got to keep up, right? Like, you can be comfortable in your job, but you also can't let yourself atrophy. You also can't let your skills fall by the wayside. Um, so you do have to work to keep your skills up. So I've read stories before um, about people who have somehow found themselves in those types of roles where they don't have to do anything, like, or they have to do like one thing and it takes them like an hour and then they spend the rest of their week just goofing off. Um, and what I've actually heard is that that's really exhausting. Like they don't like it. They like it, they like it for a while. It's fun for a while. But then after a while, they just feel like, ugh, you know, like tired. It's not, it's hard not doing anything. <laughs> and they feel stagnant and they feel deprived. And what I've seen is these folks, you know, they'll start like a side hustle. Or they'll start, you know, a degree or they'll start a certificate or they'll look for a new job. I mean, because it's just, it, ugh, it just sucks. And Chris says, one step closer to funding Mayans Kaiju fighting Mechrobot. <laughs> Only if it can be kitten-sized and I can put a kitten in it. Like, they kitten-sized mech fighting robot, I think, would be adorable. Like, yeah, you got this this armored mech and then there's a little kitten, like, poking out the top. I don't know if I want to give a kitten that much power, but it would be really cute. Spaghetti says, I forget everything because I'm learning too much. Again, that's why you should write stuff down, like I suggested. Just little bullet. You don't got to, like, document every single thing you do, but just write down the cool stuff. <laughs> Polymerization has a great quote there. Once I told a friend that I was studying, once I told a friend I was studying and he said I thought you were done studying JavaScript and I was like no you don't get it absolutely it never ends right um so one of the reasons I started 100 devs was because I had just gotten my first dev job um as a SQL developer and I had never done anything besides SQL before at that point in my life all I had ever done was SQL and I had made it to the point of a senior role <laughs> as a SQL developer, not knowing anything else, not, not even HTML. I didn't know what HTML was. Um, I couldn't tell you what CSS or CSS was or any of these acronyms. I didn't know how web pages worked. And I made it to that point, just knowing SQL. Um, and I felt like, I don't know, I just felt like this is wrong. Like I shouldn't be at this point only knowing one language. And that's why I got into 100 devs. It's just, you gotta keep learning. You gotta keep learning, find ways, find avenues of personal growth. Hopefully it's at your job, some of it. Um, but then, you know, you might have to look at outside sources like 100 devs. Um, and so I'm really glad I did that because now I under I have such a better big picture understanding of how stuff works now that I am learning these other languages and, and that sort of thing. And I feel like it enriches my work life now that I know these other things. Um, so you got to keep yourself sharp and up to date and always growing and learning. So that's a great point, um, polymerization. There used to be the anime Gundams and Kittens. Yeah. There's that Rick and Morty episode with the dog in the, uh, in the mech suit. Yeah. <laughs> the kitten has all that power, only uses it to open cabinet doors. Yeah, that sounds about right. You give them thumbs and all they're going to do is just open doors. Ube! Hey, Mayan Wolf, I recently accepted a full-time software engineer role and your past streams on MVC and authentication helped me a ton with the project I showed off in my interview. Yes, that's so awesome. I really appreciate you sharing with that with me, Ube. That's amazing. Thank you so much. 
That's so cool. And also they bring up a great point, Ube does. Um, so a lot of my streams are project based. A lot of all, outside of like this thank you type discussion type stream, a lot of what we do is we just build stuff like little pro nothing fancy, just little projects. And when we're done building that template, that, 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 that foundation, it's usually not, it's not usually not like a super polished product, but it's done and it works. And then that product goes on my GitHub. And that's where, if you're following along, you can look at the GitHub code or you can build it yourself. It doesn't matter. Um, you can match my stream with the GitHub code, take that and then build something better. That's the whole goal is that you use my streams as a launch pad to build something better, something that is yours, something that highlights your skill, that highlights your sense of design, because Lord knows I don't have a sense of design, um, but that, that highlights your skills and makes you look good. Um, and that's what, what Ube said is what I hope that everyone is able to do is to take this stuff and grow with it past what I've shown, make it yours and get a job out of it. Spaghetti says, or Black Hat says, hearing your name all the time for Spaghetti's name <laughs> makes me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me think about food. Oh, and speaking of, I'm going to grab my drink. I, I didn't grab it during the, I was trying to get the poll working and I didn't grab it during the break. So hang on. There you go. Did that hydrate that I promised you. There we go. <laughs> but again, congratulations, Ube. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank you, Cabrandi. <laughs> That's my goal. Um, so one of the big reasons that I do what I do is that, or the reason I'm so passionate about 100 devs and, um, you know, helping people for free is that growing up, I always thought that you had to have a CS degree to be a developer. Um, and that held me back for like 30 years, close to 30 years. Um, so I'm, I'm 32 and I've only been a dev for like two years. And because all that time I thought that, you know, even though I was learning dev skills and I was learning technology and I love computers and I love software and I love, you know, troubleshooting things and, and all that sort of thing, I just thought I couldn't be a dev because I didn't have a degree. Um, and so I think that held me back for way longer than it should have. Um, and that's, it's a complete and total lie, <laughs> right? And one of the coolest things about um, the, uh, one of the coolest things about like this whole sector, the whole tech sector is that it's so open. Like it doesn't really care about your background. It cares, it cares about what you can do. What, what can you bring to the table? And that's pretty unique, I feel like, in, in comparison to a lot of careers. Um, it's more about, it doesn't care about your background. My manager right now at work, my manager has a sociology degree. Like, and zero background in like coding, college work, all that sort of thing. Like, nope. And he's great. Like, he does great work. And he has a sociology degree. And I have a statistics degree with like, no, I didn't do any stuff on computers in college. Like, it was all just paper calculator type stuff. And so it really doesn't matter what you did in the past. It matters what you can do now. Um, and so I think that's probably the coolest part about all this. Yeah, it's not about where you came from. It's uh, about where you're at. Yep. <laughs> I played CS and Counter-Strike. Nobody wanted to give me a job. Yeah, I wrong CS. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think that the, the, the flip side of that is that there's a lot of people out there with CS degrees that have trouble getting jobs just because they don't know how to translate the stuff they learned in college to like practical experience. And really, that's what employers are looking for is they want to see that you are going to be able to contribute, that you're able to learn, that you're able to apply skills, um, and they, they don't really care about what you did in the past. So yeah, I think that's, there's, you know, there's good and bad with that, right? is that a degree is not necessarily going to buy your way into, um, into this field. It's again, it's about, can you answer these questions that are up here on the screen confidently?
but yeah, I do hope you're taking advantage of, you know, the resources that Hunger Devs has to offer, um, like the Discord, um, like my GitHub, uh, my past projects that we've done on stream. Um, and yeah, there's so many resources out there. Yep. And you can do exclamation point Leon for the, for, uh, the Discord and GitHub for my GitHub as Ryan demonstrated there. Thank you for that. All right. So, um, I'll ask again, because I think we've had some new folks join us. Um, so from this list of behavior questions here on the screen, are there any that were, are there any that you're struggling with? Any that you aren't sure how to answer? Or does anybody have a background? Like I'm talking, when I say background, I'm talking about like past work history, experience, that kind of thing that they feel just does not translate into answering these questions. Like they're just like, yeah, I see these questions. Fine but I have no idea how to make my background fit into these questions or my background just doesn't apply to any of these. Does anybody have something like that? Or, you know, a singular question that they just don't know how to answer. I keep gesturing the wrong direction because it's like reversed. <laughs> I keep gesturing over here. It's over here. <laughs> yeah, the camera is flipped. Or for those of you who've had interviews, um, from this list, what questions were you asked to? I think that's a val that's another valid uh, thing to consider. Sort of an informal poll. Because I think that like stuff like um, tell me about yourself is pretty universal. Um, I know I've been asked, let's see. Stuff about projects, so talking about like project planning, um, you know, your contributions to a project. Oh, like I think this one's pretty common. Time management. This is essentially just asking about time management. That's pretty common too. Zena says, I think probably the tell me about yourself and experience are the starter questions, especially with recruiters. Yeah, yep. Um, and again, with those, you kind of just want to make sure you're talking about, you know, you're passionate about software engineering. And I think, you know, you can say that, hey, my, you know, passion really shows. I can I can show you my GitHub where I've done all these projects um, and I, I pick up skills independently. Um, you know, I spend, you know, talk about the time you spend on the doing independent projects. You've worked with clients, you've worked in groups. Um, those are definitely things you can emphasize when talking about yourself and your accomplishments so far. Sound of Gaming says, what's your biggest weakness? Worst interview question of all time. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's so common anymore for that to get asked. I think in general, um, you'll probably get asked a more nuanced version of that question. So it might not be, what's your biggest weakness? It might be more of, you know, what's a time when you failed? Um, what's a time when you were in a project and it didn't work out? Um, they'll, they'll ask you maybe more specific nuanced versions of that. So you should still know how to answer those types of questions. And again, put a positive spin on it. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I've ever been asked the, the what's your biggest weakness question, um, just as a standalone. There's usually some kind of detail with it. Dr. Motor says, I got the creativity one in a chemistry interview. Oh, the creativity one. Let's see, what is that one? Looking for it. Oh, number five. Oh yeah, sure. Yep. And with this one, this one is kind of difficult, like to answer, I feel like, um, cause it could be that, you know, maybe it wasn't necessarily like unusual approach, but what I would probably emphasize on this one is, um, more about like how you found the answer. So pick something, maybe just, maybe not necessarily creative, but like difficult, like a difficult feature that you might've implemented in one of your apps, something difficult that you maybe hadn't done before. And then here you could answer you could emphasize your like independent research, like how you can Google efficiently, like where you might've, um, 
how you finally Googled and, and, and found the right result and, and found the right, um, right answer. And then how you implemented that into your project. And then whether maybe you collaborated with somebody else on Stack Overflow or Discord um, and, and, you know, sort of emphasizing your ability to do independent research um, and potentially work with others if you collaborated to ask questions or get, the, get this feature implemented. Uh, 4, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow, okay. Um, conflict, yeah. You're, probably inevitably you'll be asked a question about conflict um, and how you dealt with it. So you should, that's not a fun question to answer. Nobody likes to think about a time when they've had conflict with others um, or disagreements or, you know, potentially even arguments with others. Um, but yeah, you should definitely have an ironclad answer to this, um, to this one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Project work. Yep. Absolutely. That's, that's a good one too. Um, making mistakes. Yep. Again, this is just the weakness, the, the what's your greatest weakness question you know, these, these types of questions are just the, what's your greatest weakness question, like 2.0. They're just refined versions of that. Um, and then, yeah, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your experience and what do you know about your, about our company? Yeah. This one, you should be able to knock out of the park. Um, you should have done your research before you interview. You should have looked at the company's website. You should have looked for the company in the news, see if there's any initiatives that they're proud of that they're currently implementing. Um, any projects they're working on, anything about the team. Um, yeah, you should, especially 15, you should be able to just rattle that one right off and it's going to be different for every interview. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest weakness, <laughs> I hate people. <laughs> um, so for that one, instead of saying I hate people, what you might say instead is something like, um, you know, if you, like I said, you, not likely you'll get asked what's your biggest weakness, but you might say, um, so I have much more experience being an individual contributor. Um, and, you know, I think you'll find that my background more reflects that I, that I have more of a history of being an individual contributor and working independently on my own projects. The advantage of this is that I am self-sufficient, that I can do my own research, I can find my own answers, um, and that I can build things from start to finish independently with very little supervision. However, the downside of this is that I do have less experience at time-wise um, working with teams and, and uh, you know, working in that team dynamic. However, um, you know, I think you'll find that I am very adaptable and open to change um, and that I am able to mold myself to any particular environment in which I find myself. And so I do understand that this is a team-based role. Um, and so I can, uh, you know, I am absolutely eager to integrate myself with this team, understand the culture, um, and figure out how I work best in this group. So that's how, it, instead of saying I hate people, that's how I would answer that. Yeah, number five. Um, yeah, number five is not super fun to answer on the fly. Um, my answer was that I had to build an, so Dr. Moto says my answer was that I had to build um, <laughs> an app in R to analyze my thesis data because data analysis for it didn't exist. I think that's a fantastic answer. Yeah. Because it literally the tool that you needed didn't exist. So you friggin built it. That's, that's really cool to hear. <laughs> Thanks, Black Heart Roman. <laughs> Could sell a penguin with an ice cube. It's all about practice. You gotta practice. You gotta practice these, and you, then you get better at it. Then you start to be able to think about these things on the fly. I'm happy to to sell some more ice cubes if anybody you know needs help answering some of these because um, I've 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 I practiced them. <laughs> I find the the uh, the the thing I find kind of fun and challenging is is answering them for other people, like I just did for you. So things, you know, looking at other people's backgrounds that I'm not familiar with. I, you know, I don't, I don't know any of you. Um, and then seeing if I can spin them to, um, with, with very little input, seeing if I can spin them to answer these questions. So happy to do it for somebody else. Ping would be like, I'll take two. <laughs> well, and really, you know, there's that saying that they always say about like first impressions and that they, that they mean a lot. And if you can come across in an interview as someone who is um, competent 
but competent, but flexible. And like, I guess the right word might be affable, um, you know, easy, to, somewhat easy to talk to somewhat, you know, um, flexible to the vibe of the interview um, and, you know, open to questions, fairly quick with answers. Um, you know, if the vibe of the interview is somewhat humorous, maybe able to tell a joke here or there and show a, a certain level of comfort um, that can get you really far despite how you perform in the interview overall, just having that particular attitude can really help. And again, that's not something that's going to come immediately. That's something that does you do need to practice because you aren't going to feel comfortable if you've never practiced something before. That would be like putting a, gut a guitar in my hands and putting me in, on a stage in front of a bunch of people. I'm going to be freaking out. Um, but <laughs> if I was an actual guitar player and I had practiced the guitar, yeah, I could sit down in front of a bunch of people and play something. So it's no different than like an, learning an instrument or and then going to a concert, right? You learn these questions and then you go to an interview. And if you've practiced, you'll be good at them. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, um, okay, how do I get good at them? Um, and really, uh, all I'll say is just practice. Like, and it doesn't really matter how you practice as long as you do it. Um, some people practice in front of mirrors. I know that's what I did uh, when I was preparing for my last dev interview um, when I got my current job is, yeah, I just stood in front of a mirror and I just had the questions like printed on a piece of paper um, and I read them off and then I looked at myself in the mirror and I answered the questions. And then I kept answering them until that person in the mirror <laughs> looked fairly confident and capable of coming up with that answer without study, stuttering or like I just did there <laughs> without stuttering or pausing for too long. It's okay to pause, but not for an inordinate amount of time. Um, but I would say probably even, even better than that is to practice with someone else. Um, maybe it's somebody on the discord, maybe it's a friend or a sibling. Um, if you can have that back and forth with somebody else, you'll probably do even better. Um, and another thing that practicing with another person can do for you uh, is they can sometimes help print out or help point out the good stuff about your background that you may not have been aware of. Um, and that's what I find a lot in coffee chats is that people will be like, you know, I ask people a little bit about themselves and they tell me about their background and they'll just say something like so nonchalantly. And I'll be like, wait, that was friggin' cool. Like that was, that was amazing. Like that, that, that thing in your background was so cool. Like, why aren't you emphasizing that? Like, that's so rad. Um, tell me more. And you know, people just don't recognize how cool they are until somebody else points it out. Cause you don't have that kind of outside perspective on yourself. Um, people, that's one of my favorite things about coffee chats is that people have such varied and interesting backgrounds. And a lot of times they aren't even aware of it. And Ryan says, yeah, I noticed that <laughs> I, I noticed that when my group worked on our resumes. Yeah, people will just be like, they'll just have like a bullet point on their resume and it'll be the coolest damn thing. And you're just like, wait, no, like emphasize that, like add some action words to that, put some verbs around it and like sell that. That's so cool. Oh, we got to hydrate here. Okay. I'm about out of tea. <laughs> Finished up. Okay. <laughs> polymerization says wait you can do that type moments yeah people would be like oh yeah i built like a monster truck in my spare time and just like off the cuff like that and i'm like wait hold up <laughs> you did what yeah i think it is time for a break um and yeah i will have to get a refill on my tea i think when we come back from the break i feel like we're kind of reaching a natural sort of stopping point here um, I am still kind of sick, so I don't want to go, I, I don't think I want to go for like the full three hours today. Um, but we'll go ahead and take our break. We'll come back. I'll wrap up any last questions, um, and any last things that people want to ask or say, or, you know, talk about. Uh, and then I think we'll probably call it for, uh, for the evening, but I always love these. These are some of my favorite streams to do just because we always have the best conversation. So, um, yeah, we'll take a break, then we'll come back in five and then we'll wrap it up. And any last things that people want to ask or talk about. So come back with any more questions that you have. 
Um, and then we'll find somebody cool to raid and uh, I'll pass you off to somebody else. Okay, so five minutes, I'm gonna refill my cup and I'll see you back here. <laughs> All right, and we got another poll, so I'll get that set up too. <laughs> All right, well, so stick around for the poll as well. I think, I think this is an interesting one. I like it. Good suggestion. All right, five minutes. Go get it. Go go get up and stretch. Circle your wrist. Don't get carpal tunnel. Okay, folks, we got a minute left in the break. So fill up your water glass, pet your dog, pet your partner or your kid with their consent, of course, and then come on back. Oh, and also, if you haven't gotten up for the entire break, I totally see you and you need to get up right now and like circle your arms or, you know, twist your waist or something and do a little bit of a stretch at least. You ain't allowed to just sit there. I'm calling you out. <laughs> I knew there'd be some people, ah, that's right. I knew there were some people that just sat down the whole break. 
That ain't good for you, friends. You gotta get up. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer. Okay, the poll is going. So uh, you should, you'll find it there at the top of your chat window. Um, so it's, of course, one of the very important questions of our time, which is ranch or blue cheese dressing. Uh, so do please be sure to vote in this very important poll. <laughs> and yes, it is important. So one of the things that can be, I guess, kind of... Um, you know, dangerous, I guess, about working from home is that you don't necessarily have to get up, right? There's no walking to meeting rooms. There's no walking over to somebody else's cubicle. Like you've got your Slack or Teams or whatever right there at your desk. So you never have to get up. Um, and so it can be very tempting to just sit there. Um, and then, you know, after work, you go from sitting all day to, you know, maybe in front of a, on the couch in front of your video game console or, in front of your personal computer to go play some video games or browse the web or whatever. And so you can get to the point where you're sitting all day, every day. Um, and so it is important to try to get up, stretch a little bit, um, which is why when I'm doing these streams, I'm always standing. Um, so I have a standing set up right here. I'm standing right now. Um, and so this is, this helps me so that I'm not, you know, working all day and then <laughs> streaming for several hours and, you know, sitting the entire time. So that's just an important thing to consider. Yeah. All right. So um, before we wrap up for the day, first thing is um, vote in the poll. <laughs> Ranch or blue cheese, again, very important. Uh, you have about five minutes left there. Um, and do you have any questions? I guess any remaining questions about the interview process, working as a dev, um, crafting your story, all those sorts of things. Uh, Ryan says, a standing desk will be one of my first purchases. Yeah. And actually, you don't have to splurge on like a fancy real, quote unquote, real standing desk. So the desk that I'm standing at right now um, is an Ikea table. So just one of those standard like Ikea coffee table type tables, except it has the legs that you can like twist and make them longer. And so I have that raised up all the way. Um, and then I have my monitor on top of a Tupperware bin. Um, and then it's, a, it's the type of monitor that has like the stand that you can raise up to. So the stand raises up till it's exactly the right height. And then I have my secondary monitor, um, sitting on top of my tower, which is on a smaller table to my right. So everything is at the right height. It just only cost me like 40 bucks aside from the actual monitor. So yeah, you don't have to spend a ton um, to make a setup that works. Obviously, you know, you can 100% buy a desk, but you don't, to get the standing desk experience, you can also just kind of clug one together. <laughs> uh, Zena, they've had a good vegan, vegan ranch, but anybody got a vegan blue cheese recommendation? I'm afraid I don't. Um, I'm not like a huge dressing person myself. Um, usually if I'm making a salad, it's gonna be like a taco salad. <laughs> So I'm dumping salsa and hot sauce on it, you know, and like beans. Um, so I'm, you know, I do the whole quote unquote whole enchilada when I make a, when I make a taco salad, it's like, we're talking salsa, hot sauce, um, beans, cheese, all that jazz. Ain't got no time for dressing. Well, dude says, I can't wait to justify buying one of those fancy chairs and a nicer desk. Yeah. And if you protect your back, you know, you'll you'll be happier overall. So shrimp back mode activate. Yeah. I call it gremlin mode. Like where you're just like this. I, I'm definitely guilty of that. I have kind of, I have a little bit of scoliosis, um, like in my neck. Um, and so that makes me more likely to hunch, um, which is again, partially why I stand because it keeps my posture better. So yeah, definitely feel that goblin mode. Zinga says taco salad sounds so good. Yeah. It generally always is. Anybody else like ranch with pizza? To each their own, I guess. <laughs> D5 says, I bought hardware from Amazon and Butcher Block from Home Depot. Ooh, I would love a Butcher Block desk. That sounds amazing. Ryan says, taco salad equals best salad. I have to agree. <laughs> Sorry, I made you hungry there, Chris. 
Oh, Catterday has a suggestion for vegan blue cheese. All right. Is it called follow your heart? Or I don't know if maybe you're just giving like life advice, follow your heart to find vegan blue cheese, which I guess is, is valid as well. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's a brand name though. <laughs> Ranch and pizza, but wings with blue cheese. Okay. Yeah, we got about a minute left in the poll. So get your votes in. Ranch is winning, so I don't know how everybody feels about that. But if you disagree, get it in there. <laughs> the brand is, yes, the brand is follow your heart. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not super, super familiar with all the vegan brands, but uh, there is a lot of crossover in general. <laughs> yeah, and that's another consideration is like what you got to be careful about what you eat when you're sitting, you know, when you're sitting all day doing coding or development work or whatever. Yeah, is thinking about what you eat. I'll find, I, I have found, though, that now that I work from home, um, I'm actually eating healthier because when I worked in an office, there was like a little bakery or like a little cafe that was like in our office building. And so I could just, you know, get up from my desk and go outside of set of doors and turn to the right. And there was this cafe with like homemade pastries and, you know, coffee and pastries and all that stuff. And oh boy, it was not healthy. <laughs> okay. So ranch won the poll. So out of ranch, ranch versus blue cheese, it, ranch appears to have won. Um, I do think ranch is like very like American as far as a condiment goes. Um, I think I've, I've actually seen it called like American ranch and stuff in other countries, but, uh, yeah, no, nope, not, not entirely surprised. Blue cheese for Cobb salad, ranch for everything else. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> ranch is pretty good for veggies. Yeah. Um, I used to do carrots and ranch a lot. I've, I've just kind of gone away from ranch. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Meal prepping is really good. Um, soups and salads. Yep. I also do a lot of like those frozen veggie bags. So you, um, you know, not like, not, not even seasoned veggies, just like it's those steamer bags. So you just get them from the frozen, um, section in the grocery store and it's just raw veggies that are just flash frozen, um, with no sauces or seasonings or salt or sugar or anything. Um, and just zap them in the microwave and, and then I've just put a little salt on them and they're, they're delicious. <laughs> Buttermilk ranch. Yeah, sure. Y'all are making me hungry. Dang. <laughs> All right. Well, I really enjoyed the conversation today, um, especially the the tips on the best type of wrench or whatever, the you know, the best dressing. Um, and I also really appreciated uh, folks sharing their successes with me as well, especially those who, you know, benefited directly from past videos that I've done. I really appreciate hearing that. Um, it really, you know, it makes me enthusiastic to, to keep, to continue. So again, I really appreciate, um, hearing from you, from the folks that have gotten jobs or been, or, or benefited from some of my content or from hundred devs in general. Uh, that's so awesome to hear. And I really appreciate you sharing that. So thank you again for that. Um, <laughs> see, this is about to go watch and make Anki from your intro to sequel. Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, I am planning on doing another sequel stream here. Um, Probably not this month, um, given the holidays coming up and all that. Um, but Leon and I have discussed it and that it would be a good idea. So another secret stream will come. Uh, it'll be more like full stack app focused. So about how to make like a app with a SQL backend. So that should be pretty fun. Um, and yeah, you know, I have a bunch more content that I want to talk about <laughs> once I'm done constantly speed running being sick. Um, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, but looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, how about we find somebody to raid? Give me just a moment. Let's see who's online. Yeah, I like I always say, you know, Zena, if I uh, if I ever stop having fun, I'll stop streaming. But if I'm still streaming, then I'm still having fun. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. All right, who do we got to raid today?
Uh, as always, we have the fantastic CM Griffin. Um, I see Team Vash. I see Purple Elt. Um, I don't think we've... Um, so I think last time CM Griffin raided us. So why don't we go ahead and raid them back? Because uh, it's been a little while. So uh, let's send you folks their way. They are always entertaining. Uh, yeah, let's hit them up. See what they're working on today. Ooh, it looks like they're wearing their pizza sweatshirt. So I'm sure it'll be a fun time. <laughs> All right, starting the raid now. And I will see you all again uh, next weekend, next Sunday. All right, let's see. All right, raid is starting now. See you later. <laughs>